Welcome to my second episode of Life Hacks Tips and Tricks. You guys seem to love the first one, so I spent a couple hours and I have so much ideas. If you do like this series, leave a like. It helps me out a lot, guys. It really does. And if you guys have any suggestions, hacks, tips, anything, leave them below. I might slowly use them if I run out of ideas, and I'll definitely give you guys some uh, shout outs. So, yeah. Like I said, these videos will have some high content and medium content, but let's uh, start off with something easy. Tears of Guthix, guys. Very easy quest, takes 20 minutes. Doing the quest will unlock this little mini game. Takes about a minute, you can do once a week, and uh, it'll basically give you XP in your lowest skill, depending on the level of the skill and the XP. I've personally done it probably 50 times in my Ars career. I've had a few people tell me that the south wall actually gives twice as much points, and uh, it switches twice as quick but I didn't seem to notice any difference. And I've always been using, you know, like the east wall. I, th I think that's the best, guys. I would definitely pick the north or the east wall. But yeah, guys, with that being finished, almost 6,000 smithing XP. Very nice. All right, so the next tip for you low levels, even high levels, man. I have an IRL friend. He's like 115 CB in his bank. His bank is disgusting. But yeah, guys, try and keep organized. It'll help you out so much, and it'll make you feel better. All these potions everywhere, scattered. It's, it's going to hurt your brain. And I probably could organize my rings and my burning amulets at the bottom, but you get the idea. A life hack right here guys, saving up your one charge dueling rings and your games necklace, cause if you use it, it turns to dust, but yeah, saving your last charge and alking them. In the last life hacks video, I went over farming a little bit, but uh, for any of you low levels, this is what you should be doing while you're farming, either doing bolts, alking all those rings I just showed you, or you know, bows or whatever you please. You can even put gem tips on top of your bolts and also enchant them. This is a main way I got 99 mage, profited quite a bit while I got 90 farming. So yeah, highly suggested guys. And look at this animation as well. This is more of a delay than Venge. Pretty insane. I might even have to make a video of making bolts to rush people. That would be insane content. Another alternative to making bolts or alking during farm runs is doing agility guys. And I got a little tip on my sleeve. I learned this from Jibram, one of the best. Uh, you guys can take logs. And if you do it at the right tick, you can actually run and still fire make. It wouldn't be as efficient as alking because you have to go back into the bank. But if you had like 26 inventory spots and you were alking up top and then did the fire making below, that could be some pretty good XP. This is a really known method by the veterans, but maybe some of you new players do not know about it, and that is the Varrock Diaries. If you end up doing the easy, then medium, then hard, then elite, you could actually pay for a bond, and I think you can almost get a bond with the hards, which isn't too bad. I would definitely look into it, guys. And if you do the medium diaries, you can switch your teleport from Varrock to Grand Exchange, and you also unlock the Edgeville Furnace. I think that's an easy, so I would definitely look into the diaries, guys. This one is definitely a little quirky, but this is for any multi PKers out there, anyone using a D Spear. If you know, the D Spear delays you quite a bit and you know it stuns your opponent and whatnot. And I find when I go multi PKing, I ask all my friends to bring one, and no one wants to bring one, including me. And I think it's kind of a waste of spec, and you know it's slow, all these things. But I got my friend Small Arms to actually show you that you can uh, bypass the delay and actually hide your G Mall hits. So, uh, yeah. This may not look that crazy, but from his perspective, he can't see almost any of my hits, and uh, we confirmed into one not, so yeah, that's pretty wild. And shout out to Small Arms helping me again. So I definitely got some really good tips coming up, but this one is really OP. So everyone's paying so much for these pink anti-poison potions when they're almost four times, like five times the amount of the green ones, and the antidote plus plus, they last 12 minutes, guys. That's so much longer, so I uh, definitely buy those up. They are so damn cheap. I think it's because of Zolra. Luckily, Zolra got nerfed, but I actually don't think that item got nerfed from the drop table. Um, and yeah, there's probably 10 trillion of them in the game because all the Zolra bots. And of course, that was the main boss being killed for him, and uh, basically the only way they actually came into the game. Alright, so next up, if you don't know about this, it's going to benefit you so much. And if you do know about it, you need to do it more because I know you're not because I don't do it because I'm lazy. I started doing this about three years ago and uh, I remember when I used to stream even Deadman mode, a lot of people would be like, dang bro, what are you doing? How are you doing that? And I think it is kind of an unknown method to be honest. And what you need to do, you can attack anything and you run back a square or you can run under it and you want to basically get the same hit cycle or have the monster be one tick before you and then set your quick praise to Pidey and pray melee at the same time 
so you guys can do both and just knock it out, pray melee, pray party. I see a lot of people either doing one or the other, and guys, if you're pro enough, you can even alk in between. Uh, this gets pretty tedious, but if you want that XP, I was doing this a lot in demo mode. Help me get barrage and rank one strength and like rank three slayer, so highly recommended. And if you're lazy, you can literally just sit there, AFK, spam click, watch a movie, and uh, yeah. 99 mage coming your way. Also a quick tip for any low level before they get a berserk ring or something like that is to use a ring of the wealth. It actually picks up all gold and I think a few valuables as well. Plus guys you can just teleport to the grand exchange with this. So helpful. Definitely buy some. I got like 10 in my bank. I only use them for teleports but yeah. So no life hack video is complete without a food tip slash trick hack. And uh, yeah, we got some wines coming up. Jug of wines, three gold, heals 11, I believe. So if you're a hardcore or a regular Iron Man, you can actually go to Draenor to get some, or you could venture out all the way to Alcarid and then go to Polovich, and you can actually buy bottles of wine, which is the same thing. All right, so the next food item is the stew. These things are a little bit expensive on the GE because people use them for Chaos Fanatic, Chaos Elemental, because you know, it actually keeps the bowl in the inventory. And you know, like the Chaos Fanatic, its special ability is to take off your gear. And if you have a filled inventory, that would not happen. So uh, that's why they're a little expensive. But you can go to Cami and buy them for very cheap. He also sells meat pies, but uh, probably just go with this too. Next up, a kebab. They are 14 GP in the GE, but you can actually just go to Alcarid and buy them for one gold each from uh, from this guy right here. The cool thing about the kebab is it's random based on your current health and uh, HP level and stuff. It's a little confusing, but I'll pull up a chart for you. I would definitely get these if you're straight out of Lumbridge. Best food you could obtain. All right, so the final and the best food item, the watermelon. Yeah, you take a knife to it, three pieces, five HP. That's a monkfish in one inventory for like less than 10 GP. I bet you're wondering why you spent mills on monkfish and lobsters in the past. <sighs> yeah, we all, we've all been there. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're not for future content. And the next tip for any low levels is to craft gold amulets at 8 crafting. And uh, you guys are actually going to make profit on this. You could potentially alchem as well, but you're still going to lose money like most alchemables, which is sad. I showed in the last video how you can use items on the deposit box and press 4 and it'll instantly deposit them all and you can just run back and get to fishing or whatever. But when your inventory is full with supplies and you need to gather another like 27 supplies, it's not valid to do this method at all. But it is very good for things like fire making and maybe even making things like stamina where you have one slot of inventory and then you have to get you know 27 new items and just use that noted stack on a bank booth and press 1. So I want to cover this one very briefly, but leave a comment if you guys want to see a merching video in depth in the future. But yeah, it's basically just merching guys, buying for the low and the high. I see a lot of people streaming, especially like demo mode, and they just plug the offer in and it doesn't buy and they get all butthurt and just sit there and complain, but they could have just checked it. So with something like Super Combats where you're planning to buy a couple hundred or thousand, you could easily save yourself 500k to a mil just by checking the prices. Like I said guys, let me know if you want to see an in-depth merching video, but if you guys are just starting out, what I did as well is you can try items like OB capes, dragon long swords, basically anything, and just buy it for like 50k over what it's worth, and you can literally sell it for 1 GP, and uh, it's going to sell you the lowest offer, and then just plug it up 1 or 2 GP guys, and you are set, make them gains. Also guys, a quick tip, the rock cake, um, when you're DHing, maybe training, do a nightmare zone. Also, if you're nightmare zoning, you should be 1 HP, so you take less damage with absorptions. But yeah guys, put it to the bottom left of your inventory and just right click spam guzzle. Alright, so this life hack is going to be very helpful to those uh, high riskers. And I know a lot of people use like uh, Shark Brew Kwambon, but you can actually fit a pineapple pizza slice in there, which is another 11 HP. In theory, you could be healing like 65 HP. That is quite a chunk of health and you'd have to be pretty bad to not eat that and uh, still get KO'd. But then again, people are hitting like 130 combos with the AGSG Mall and stuff. It's getting insane nowadays. I also tried to fit a Guthix Restore Sip in there, but you could not do it. So I've seen many people get confused, but the dart and the knife actually attack at the same speed and the dart is always one tier below the knife. So a steel dart is equal to an iron knife and etc etc. But guys, the cost is monumentally different. Just looking over some of these prices, you're looking at an iron dart, 18 gold, 
versus an iron knife 50 gold and you know a steel knife 70 gold versus a 30 gp steel dart so guys definitely go with the darts they're so much more cheaper it's because everyone is making them for the blowpipes and honestly who's gonna pay 150 gp for a knife that is so crazy you guys are gonna go broke in no time i'm pretty sure iron arrows are only like 15 gp max as well so uh, yeah guys never train with knives again gonna hurt your bank pretty hard in the early days and if you are looking to waste money i would suggest getting a cannon um, at one range basically I think you could do it and you could get to 40 in like an hour or two and it might cost you a little bit of money but hey and if you guys are using the blowpipe let's compare the prices real quick yeah this is insane mithril 30 addy 130 and ruin 1k plus then you got the dragon almost 3k so it's really a big deal you know which one you want to use I would say only use dragon for PKing although I want PK with a blowpipe use ruin for like high PVM bosses Addy for you know high slayer monsters and then mithril to train that's how I would go so one of the last tips I want to go over is based on the cannon so when I was recently training to finish off my 99 slayer I'd see a lot of noobs um, not using a cannon or just doing it the wrong way and I know one of my IRL friends only uses a cannon if it's a multitask but you guys can do it in single and it's gonna help speed things up quite a bit so the first tip I want to say is place the cannon in the correct spot I even know there's multiple guides on YouTube from like Autumn Elegy and whatnot for the correct cannon spots, but it has changed recently due to the Neves Cave. In places like the Blue Dragon Den, I don't even know if there is a correct spot, but you just want to place it, you know, in between the eggs where it can get as much dragons as possible. So I'm not gonna lie, this was not the best example. I used to do this at Hellhounds all the time and be hitting like five of them at a time multi-combat while I'm safe spot blowpiping. But um, yeah, the, the blue dragons kind of got caught from the eggs and the babies would hit me. It wasn't the best spot, but hopefully you guys see how this could benefit you setting your cannon up and standing away from the monsters and the cannon will just hit everything because it's not registering that you're in combat. So it's basically multi in a single way combat. And one more crucial tip. If you stand northeast one square diagonally of your cannon, it should in theory always shoot two balls at the monster that is attacking you if you know you're not doing the little safe spot method I was talking about. If the monster is really big, it could affect it, but like most monsters like blood velds, um, even this blue dragon worked and it's pretty big. So yeah, if you're wondering why it shoots two balls on one monster sometimes, it's because it's in the correct positioning. It's confusing guys, I don't blame you. The way they coded it was a little funky, but yeah. But yeah guys, hopefully you did enjoy some of these tips. Like I said, feel free to leave below any ideas you have. You know, keep dumping ideas and I will probably use yours one day. That is basically the video though. The next one will be a few minutes longer, I promise. Yes boys, we got another Declaw PK. I'm about to be uploading some back-to-back -back, uh, videos of me basically saving the PVMers. Uh, I have a couple accounts that are actually looking like PVMers. They get PK'd by PKers and I actually lash back and declaw them. And uh, it's gonna be really interesting. We got some crazy big loot. So if you guys are interested in that, you know, definitely check it out, stay tuned. And like no joke, I got so much ideas planned out for you guys and uh, really unseen content. So yeah, definitely stay tuned and keep active and follow me on Twitter if you guys are not. I uh, talk about some previews and you know, just, just follow me guys. Check me out, I'll follow you back. Let me know you came from the videos. Peace out guys, hopefully you have a great day. Thank you for watching.